Okay, I will start my talk. Thank you for the introduction, uh, Mario. And I express my thanks for this opportunity. So my name is Shigekazu Higuchi. I'm a professor of Kyushu University, Japan. Today, I will give a talk about Sakarian rhythm and uh, artificial light at night from laboratory to field. So many study on non-visual effects of light have been conducted in laboratories. However, uh, laboratory experiments are sometimes used in extreme light environment and light exposure may also start from midnight. Therefore, we don't know well understand how much artificial lighting affects human sleep and circadian rhythm in real life. So, uh, first of all, my English is not good enough. So please email me directly if you do not understand well. So, so now in Japan, uh, midnight, so I'm just a little sleepy, so. So first, I'd like to start with short introduction. Uh, human physiological functions have a circadian rhythm as shown in this figure, sleepness and melatonin increase at uh, melatonin increase and body temperature decrease at night. These variations are controlled by the internal circadian clock and the natural light and dark cycle is an important time cue for entraining circadian rhythm to 24 hours. So this is a photo of the Earth at the night taken from the satellite. You can clearly see the world's map of artificial light. It has been reported that artificial light at night delays circadian rhythm and is a possible cause of sleep and health problems, including mental health, obesity, and cancer. Artificial lighting is essential to our nightlife, but it's time to think about the effect of artificial light at night for our health. So this figure shows the pathway of the visual and non-visual effect of light Visual information is received at the retina and it's transmitted to the visual area in the brain like this. And the information of light is also transmitted to the circadian clock. Light causes a phase shift of circadian rhythm and the suppression of melatonin and increasing alertness in the pupillary light response. These are called here non-visual effects of light. And it's well known that non-visual effects of light depend on the timing of light exposure and the duration of light exposure and the intensity of light and the spectrum of light. So how to measure non-visual effects of light? We often use melatonin concentration in saliva. Uh, melatonin can be measured from a saliva sample. Uh, melatonin is secreted from the pineal gland during the night. Uh, melatonin concentration has a circadian rhythm. And melatonin is acutely suppressed by exposure to light at night like this. Therefore, light-induced melatonin suppression is a good marker to evaluate of the effect of light at night. So next, I will briefly explain how light affects human circadian rhythm. If you are exposed to light in the morning, uh, like this, the circadian rhythm of melatonin secretion is advanced the next day, like this. On the other hand, in, if you are exposed to light at night, the circadian rhythm of melatonin secretion is delayed next day like this. So next, non-visual effect of light depend on the spectrum of light. It's well known that blue light has a strong impact on melatonin suppression, circadian phase shift and alertness. 
the figure on the left shows the action spectrum of melatonin suppression. The peak of sensitivity is at blue light wavelengths of about 460 nanometer. The figure on the right shows the showed that the increase in sleepiness during the night is significantly inhibited by blue light exposure. And in addition to monochromatic short wavelengths light, the difference in the color of white fluorescent light that we used in our daily lives have been examined in many studies. The higher the correlated color temperature is, the stronger is the blue component. Similar to the effect of blue light, the previous studies have shown that lighting with a high correlated color temperature with contain more blue component has impact on non-visual effect of light. For example, this slide shows the result of laboratory experiment the result on the left side melatonin level, you can see that there is a great suppression of melatonin with higher correlated color temperature lighting uh, as shown blue line. Then the figure on the left uh, light side shows the effect on sleep. It showed that exposure to high correlated color temperature light before bedtime uh, spreads uh, slow wave sleep in the fast cycle, like this. So my studies have been carried out in laboratory to examine the non-visual effect of color temperature light at night. Um, sorry, many studies have been carried out in laboratory to examine the non-visual effect of CCT light at night. My question is how about the impact on light at night in real life? Therefore, I've tried to examine the relationship between color temperature light at night in real life and the individual circadian phase. In this photo of uh, a go condominium in Japan, you can see the warm color of low color temperature light uh, like this here, and the day light color of a high color temperature light. Uh, it's difficult to see the difference, but uh, in most Asian countries, it's common to use white uh, color lighting at night at home, it means that Asian countries are good field to examine the effect of correlated color temperature light in real life. In this experiment, in order to identify the individual circadian phase, saliva samples were collected every 30 minutes under dim light condition. This figure shows the individual data of increasing melatonin uh, concentration at night. The average dim light melatonin onset, the RMO, was almost 10 p.m. There was a large individual differences in dim light melatonin onset. Melatonin is some adults start started to increase around 8 p.m. but melatonin in some others others started to increase around 11 p.m. The next we investigate is the relationship between this variation in the area more and the color temperature of light at home. Measurement of light were carried out by the participant in their home the average correlated color temperature of light was 3,800 Kelvin. The horizontal axis of the figure indicate color temperature. 
the vertical axis is there anymore. As you can see, the, there, were there was significant positive correlation between color temperature and dim light melatonin onset. So the participant uh, subject who used low color temperature light show early circadian phase. But the participants who used high correlated color temperature light at home shows late circadian phase. The use of high correlated color temperature lighting was correlated to delay in the circadian phase. So in the study on the previous slide, the number of the subjects was small. We therefore conducted another study to examine the lighting environment and sleep habit of university students. The participants in that study were almost 450 Japanese university students to investigate the correlated color temperature right at home using this figure. We asked with lighting is used at home in the room where you spend most of your time at night. The percentage of students who used high correlate color temperature lighting at night were 60% for Japanese students. More than half of students used high correlate color temperature at home at night. Then the upper table on the right slide of the slide shows differences in the weekday sleep habit in student. The student who used low color temperature light uh, bedtime is, was earlier than the uh, participant who used high correlate color temperature light. And uh, so, sorry, I'm sorry. So, so lower table shows the three days uh, sleep habit. In addition, bedtime and sleep onset time, midpoint of sleep was significantly later in the high CCT groups. These two field studies suggest that light color temperature, high color temperature influence usual sleep habit and circadian rhythm phases. So this slide shows the inter and intra-individual differences in non-visual effect of light. In addition to the timing of light exposure, duration of light exposure and light intensity and the spectrum light uh, interest in intra and intra-individual differences is growing. Factors contributing to uh, individual differences include age, uh, gene polymorphisms, ethnic season, light intensity, uh, light history, seasonal affective disorder, delayed sleep phase disorders, etc. For the past several years, we have been studying the non-visual effect of light on children. Today, we presented our research on laboratory and field experiment on children. So as a background of children's study, not only adults, but also children now have short sleep time and late best time in modern society. Short sleep time in children is associated with decreasing educational achievement, increased in body weight, and increasing emotional and behavioral difficulties. So then we conducted an experiment to compare light-induced melatonin suppression in children and adults. Uh, the protocol uh, is quite simple. On the first night, saliva samples were collected every hour under dim light conditions. On the second night, the participants were exposed to moderately bright light at five 
180 luxes at the angle of gaze, uh, as shown these figures. Uh, this figure show this figure shows the increase in melatonin concentration and the dim light condition on the first night in adults and children. On the second day, the melatonin concentration was suppressed to so some extent by light exposure in adults. How about children's data? Uh, surprisingly, melatonin secretion in children was completely suppressed by light exposures. So this figure shows the average melatonin concentration the melatonin concentration in adults and children was significantly suppressed by light. The percentage of melatonin suppression was 88.2% in children, uh, which was significantly larger than that in adults. We found that melatonin secretion in children was completely suppressed by moderately bright light, and the melatonin suppression by light in children was almost twice than in adults. So in this uh, study, it was hypothesized that the melatonin suppression is larger in children than in adults. As shown in the figure on the left, Horizontal axis is age, and vertical axis is pupil size. Uh, pupil size in children are larger than in adults. The figure on the right shows the light transmission rate of the crystal lens. Horizontal axis is wavelength of light. As you can see, transmission rate especially uh, blue light in children is higher than that in adults. This ophthalmologic characteristic suggests that children are more sensitive than adults to light. As an additional information, it has not been possible to measure lens transmittance in people, so we have uh, collaborated with uh, some uh, researcher, uh, Petteri and Ray, and to measure it using the Brookings image method, which takes only five seconds. If you are interested, please see the paper. There is also study that used this system to examine at the same time, the individual difference in lens transmittance and the light induced melatonin suppression of children and adults. So, next, we found that melatonin suppression was larger in children by using moderately bright light. However, uh, such bright light is not usual in daily life at night at home. After that experiment, some parents asked me, how about the effect of room light at home in daily life? So this is the aim of the second experiment. So protocol is almost the same. On the first night, saliva sample were collected every 30 minutes under dim light conditions. On the next day, a participant return home. They collected saliva sample with one week, within one week by themselves at home under room light condition every hours. Saliva sample were frozen at home and sent to our laboratory. A measurement of light was done in their home by themselves. The average of vertical illuminance at eye level was approximately 140 luxes. Uh, this figure shows the average of melatonin concentration and the dim light in the experimental room and room light at home. In adults, there was no significant difference, difference in melatonin concentration 
and the dim light and the under room light. On the other hand, in children, melatonin concentration at bedtime was significantly suppressed by room light, as shown uh, this area. Percentage of melatonin suppression in children was uh, almost 50% and uh, tend to be higher than that in adults. So this experiment, we found that melatonin was significantly suppressed the blessed in children even by light at home. So the next question is what are the effect of the spectrum of light on the melatonin suppression in children? As I mentioned before, blue light has a greater impact on melatonin suppression and the blue light transmission rate of the crystal lens is higher in children. So, Next hypothesis is that children are more sensitive to blue light, blue enriched high correlated color temperature light. The experiment protocol was almost the same as that in the previous experiment. Saliva samples were collected under dim light condition on the first night. And uh, then participants were divided into a low color temperature group and the high color temperature group. Uh, in this study, we used LED light. The figure on the light show the spectrum distribution of the two lighting conditions. So this slide shows the effect of color temperature on melatonin suppression in children and adults. As shown in the upper figures, Significant melatonin suppression was found in children under both the low color temperature and the high color temperature. Furthermore, the amount of melatonin suppression by light was significantly larger under the high color temperature light than under low color temperature light condition. And no significant melatonin suppression was found in adults as shown in the bottom figures. So we measured subjective sleepness at habitual bedtime and one hour after habitual bedtime. In adults, there was no significant difference between the two lighting condition. However, as shown in the figure on the right, a significant difference in sleepiness was found in children. Sleepiness in low CCT, low color temperature light condition increased one hour after habitual bedtime, but it did not increase in children in the high correlated color temperature light. So, this figure shows a uh, uh, dim light melatonin onset and uh, color temperature light at home in children. I have shown this same slide before in adults. Uh, this data uh, for children. This figure shows the individual data of increased melatonin concentration at night. Surprisingly, there was a large individual difference in dim light melatonin as well as in adults. Melatonin in some children started to increase around 8 p.m. and but melatonin in some others started to increase around 10 p.m. Next, we investigate the relationship between this variation in dim light melatonin onset and the color temperature of light at home. As you can see, there was significant positive correlation between uh, the RMO and the color temperature. So this slide shows the relationship between dim light melatonin onset and uh, sleep habit in children and uh, horizontal axis uh, dim light melatonin onset, and vertical axis is sleep onset time, and uh, sleep hour, and sleep latency. So late dim light melatonin onset was related to with late sleep onset time 
and short sleep duration and long sleep latency. These results suggest that preventing dim light melatonin onset delay is important for children's night sleep. So uh, use of low color temperature lighting at night can be a good countermeasure. So here is another question. Uh, do children need bright light at night? Lighting at night may be too bright for children in Japan. Japan. Therefore, we measured subjective evaluation of light in children, adults, and older people. The figure on the right shows the sense of brightness. The red line is for children, and the blue light is for middle-aged adults, and the black line is for the older adults. As you can see, the brightness perception of adults and the elderly, uh, uh, older people, clearly decreased at low illuminance, like this, while that of children does not decrease so much even at low illuminance. The result of how comfortable, uh, similar to those for brightness, children feel more comfortable at lower illuminance than adults and uh, older peoples. So some Japanese parents worry about that living in dark environment may affect their low vision, but there is, as far as I know, there is no evidence of that. So at night, from the children's uh, perspective, bright light, light is not uh, maybe necessary. So uh, this is a camp experiment in the natural light dark cycle with no artificial lighting. Uh, it may be the ultimate field study. This study is conducted in Colorado, Denver, United States with adults. When I saw this paper, I wanted to do the same experiment in Japan with children. Uh, so before going to our uh, experiment, uh, we explain uh, this uh, paper. In this study, it is reported that uh, dim light melatonin onset and uh, sunset are synchronized by living under natural light dark cycle. It also showed that the phase advance of the nocturnal chronotype is particularly larger. This result indicates that the artificial lighting at night is uh, making our circadian rhythm more nocturnal. So uh, this slide shows the camp experiment conducted on children uh, in Japan. The figure above shows the children's sleep and the dim light melatonin onset before the camp. Both show the large individual differences. The lower figure shows the data on the 10th day after the camp, as in the previous uh, Colorado uh, data. Dim light melatonin onset was earlier and nearly synchronized with sunset time. In addition, this study also found that the phase advance was greater in the evening night uh, type children. So uh, the next topic is ethnic differences in non-visual effect of light. 
So we conducted the experiment to clarify the ex ethnic differences in melatonin suppression more than 10 years ago. It's known that white skin color in European people is a result of genetic adaptation to a short duration of sunshine in high latitude area because white skin increase absorption of ultraviolet ray promotes vitamin D synthesis. So how about light eyed in European population? So at that time, there was no evidence at this data showed the melatonin suppression in Asian population. Uh, melatonin concentration uh, significantly increased until the start of exposure to light. After exposure, melatonin was significantly suppressed by light uh, like this. Uh, illuminance was uh, 1,000 luxes. Next, uh, this is a result of European population. As you can see, melatonin was strongly suppressed by light in European people. This result showed that uh, sensitivity to light European people may be the result of uh, genetic adaptation should. So, uh, as you probably know uh, this uh, data, this study is uh, about inter-individual variability in the response of the human circadian system to evening light, uh, published by the uh, Philips, uh, et cetera. And, uh, and this study shows that the existence of high sensitivity individuals Surprisingly, 50% of melatonin suppression occurs even at 10 lux illumination. Uh, illumination uh, here. Over on, on average, the uh, ED50 was uh, 24 lux for the entire uh, whole hour exposure. This means that the average illumination required to produce 50% melatonin suppression is uh, almost 25 luxes. So 25 lux corresponds to dim light in uh, our previous study. So past uh, study often used three uh, 30 lux as a dim light. Uh, we still sometimes use 330 uh, lux as dim light. So when I saw this study, I immediately felt that there are ethnic differences in light sensitivity. Then I thought this might be Western bias. In recent years, it has been called weird. Uh, it has been pointed out that also most scientific study used Western, educated, industrialized, rich, and demographic populations. Many population, however, many population on the planet are not weird. This has also been noted in the field of research on the non-visual effect of light, according to uh, the paper of uh, manual speech. So it's, uh, they said it's important to create uh, diverse and inclusive evidence base that incorporates non-weird data. So, to verify the ethnic differences accurately, uh, we looked at those dependent response under multiple right condition in uh, East Asian populations. The photo 
uh, so the experimental setting, the light exposure experiment was conducted in the individual booths with lamps placed above the subject head. The light spectrum and the melanopic EDI are shown in this figure and the table. Light exposure begins approximately one hour after dim light melatonin onset. This figure shows the suppression of melatonin. Horizontal axis shows the uh, relative time, and the vertical axis shows the melatonin concentration. As you can see, there is a illuminance dependent suppression of melatonin. And then, first of all, uh, it's clear that melatonin at 30 lux is not different from that of the dim light. This means that melatonin suppression does not occur at 30 lux in Asian populations. So we also try to uh, generate those dependent response data for each individual, although the experimental condition and protocol were not exactly the same. The sample size is not large enough but it seemed to shift to the light of the result of Philips et al. data. Let's move our data here. You can clearly see the differences. It may be that Eastern Asia population are less sensitive to light overall than European people. So next, for the comparison of Western data, we used the prediction model by Hinemes et al. They proposed a prediction model of melatonin suppression by light exposure. Most of the study used in this paper were conducted in Europe, Europe and North America. In addition, uh, in this paper, a uh, light parameter calculation tool is distribute, distributed. So it's very useful. Uh, for example, by entering the melanopic EDI and exposure time and uh, my dry ISIS medication, the predict, predicted rate of melatonin suppression can be obtained easily. So using this sheet, we calculated the melatonin suppression rate for each of the melanopic EDI values we used in the experiment. The light exposure time was three hours and no pupil might dialysis. The dotted line in the figure show this prediction here. Next, we uh, added this our results. The results show that the melatonin suppression rate for East Asian is lower than predicted by human uh, data prediction. The difference is particularly clear at low melanopic EDI. So I will show one possible mechanism of the ethnic differences. First, light transmittance through the iris uh, is larger in light eye than in dark eyes, according to the paper of uh, Vandenberg. Uh, secondly, uh, because of less pigmentation of the fundus opery here, In light eyed people, deflection of light in fundus ocular is larger in light eyes than in dark eyes. Therefore, photoreceptors in the retina possibly receive more light in light eyed European people. So, uh, future direction for ethnic differences research. 
We are planning to additionally experiment with European ethnic group using the same protocol and the same experimental condition in Japan uh, this uh, autumn, from this autumn. And uh, as a measurement, other than melatonin suppression need to be examined. We already have data on the pupillary response on East Asian to light. And a study using non-Asian, non-East Asian, and non-European ethnic group is needed. So comparison of East Asian and European children is also interesting. We are also conducting research using um, metamoric light source that can moderate only IPRGCs. So elucidation of the mechanism of ethnic differences, including gene and the evolutionary and adaptive significance of the existence of ethnic differences. So finally, I will conclude my talk today. The effect of correlated color temperature light was confirmed in the field study in Japan. Uh, use at high correlated color temperature lighting at home at night was related to delay of the circadian phase in adults and children. Use of high correlated color lighting at home at night was related to the delay of sleep timing and the high correlated color temperature grew and rich light had a great impact on melatonin suppression and alertness in children. So recommendations for light environment that take into account the visual and non-visual characteristics of children are needed. So ethnic differences in light-induced melatonin suppression was found. East Asian people might be less sensitive to light at night than European people. So it's important to collect non-weird data. So individual and population differences in circadian photosensitivity should be paid more attention for design the human-centered lighting environment. So thank you for your attention.